Pause up, everybody. Welcome to Meow Hour. I'm your host, Arden Moore. With me is one of my ginger boy feline co-host, Rusty the Performer. <laughs> you know this show is brought to you by the Cat Fancier Association each and every Wednesday. And we are very grateful to our sponsor, in Clover, the makers of cat and dog supplements. We're going to show a, a nice screenshot of that in a moment. With me, too, it couldn't be Meowy Hour with a dynamic duel of All Breed, CFA Cat Judge, Kathy Black, and our doggy designee, Destiny. Oh. Destiny is wearing one of our giveaways today. This was made by Jill Thompson of Onyx Cats. Um, note to um, Jill from Rusty and my boy pet safety cat Casey. Thank you very much, but we just keep taking it off. But we know a lot of cats like it. So we have ours right here and I would rather play with it than wear it. But it's beautiful and thank you. Um, we also want to let you know we got some great prizes and Get ready for your questions to come our way. You got, are you perplexed by your feline? Well, the good doctor's in the house. With us today is Dr. Marcy Koski. She is the founder of Feline Behavior Solutions. And later in the show, she's going to give away a $110 value one hour consult. So pay attention. Marcy, if I may call you Marcy. Absolutely. Uh, welcome, welcome to Meowie Hour. Thank you so much, Arden and Kathy. I'm really happy to be here. It's so exciting. All right. <laughs> We're, and maybe one of her kitties will show up. We never know. But, you know, we are here with a good doctor that is a both a certified feline behavior and training specialist. Uh, she has a, we're going to get right into it, but she's got a lot of cool things that she has done and is doing for all things feline. But first, uh, let's talk about, uh, you want to go this way, bud? Here you go. I'm going to leave. I'll see you. All right. Hey, he goes, I'll be back. I'll be back because I'm a foodie. All right. I did not realize how important cats are when it comes to the world of art. Check this out. Um, there's a term that's being bantered about now. It's called sophisticats. I've heard of hepcats. Have you heard of hepcats, Marcy? Yes. Well, in the 60s, man, I was hip. Well, it turns out there's this, uh, this uh, prestigious magazine, uh, CA Modern Magazine, and it's all about art and, and through the history. And it said during the Art Deco era of the 1920s and 30s, the, the animal that best fit the spirit of that decade was the gazelle. <laughs> but in the 50s, the Sophisticats. And now in the 2020s, they are saying in art and design, it's all about the simple house cat. So I love these it, black cats. We need look to make at these art logo. designs. Yeah. So they say that, uh, what's going on? Well, there's this guy named Josh Agle, A-G-L-E. He's known as Shag. That's with a G, not the basketball player with a Q. Shag. And he is really pushing cats and art. And he said something uh, which I really like. He said, cats, um, they're like mid-century. They can be serious with a little bit of whimsy. One moment, a cat will be looking into your eyes and you feel like you're going back centuries in time. What are they thinking? And then the next, they're chasing a butterfly and looking like a kitten. That is the power of the cat. Um, what I love about this, here is a connection to CFA. In these prestigious publications where they look about cats and art through the decades, they quoted one of our own. Come on, guys. A recent guest on CFA, on Meowie Hour, Karen Lawrence. Remember? She's the curator yeah. of the CFA's Feline Historical Foundation. And uh, she was quoted about what's going on with cats and uh, I love this because she said, let me make sure I get the right quote. Where are you? She says, you had a lot of cat shows in the 1950s and cats became exceptionally popular in the 40s, 50s and 60s. That started a whole new era. There was a recognition that a cat was actually a popular pet. 
So it's kind of cool that we had our very own Karen Lawrence in this article. What do you guys think about cat art? Have you seen that La Chat Noir, you know, that image of the cat? That's pretty famous. Um, Kathy, what do you think about cats and art, why it works? I mean, no offense to you, doggy designee, destiny, <laughs> but they think that cats are more sleeker designs. Yeah, and no, they're cooler. just sexy. You know, cats <laughs> are sexy. So, you know, those things, I, I love those Dress, those women's dresses on those cat, black cat bodies that's just I mean they're just they they bring forth you know cats just speak sophistication and and aloofness right. and and uh, mystery and all that stuff that goes along with cats and so I think it goes perfectly with art well and what do you take it on this I mean the take between cats versus dog when it turns to uh, cultural art Dr. Marcy oh well I pref I I personally love cat art. My whole office I is see something behind with cat you. art. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favorite watercolor artists, um, Megan Lynn Cott. Okay. Um, and I switch this rather like pretty regularly. Um, lots of different it's things. It's beautiful. There. I like it. And well, it, but my whole ahead. office, and I have to say. Arden, you brought up Shag. I actually went to one of his art shows like maybe 10 years ago in Denver. Really? And um, it was amazing. It was, and I met him and I love his art. We, we bought some of his art. Um, and I specifically love his art because of the 50s kind of cat personas yeah. that he portrays. Yeah. Well, I think it's going to be another HGTV show, you know, mid-century cats. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? I love it. I'd watch it. <laughs> I'd watch it. <laughs> Well, well I, did say, I, I love this one. I should get my computer oh, to yeah. work. Because yeah. this one so looks like the 50s. You know, you've got that classic oh, yeah. clock from the 50s and the chairs from the 50s and the wall art. And, uh, you know, like the little mood lamp and everything. But this is like making a comeback. This is the style that's coming back around now. Uh, the chairs with these pointy legs. I've got a chair that looks just like this. And, wow. And uh, so the 50s style is kind of making a comeback. So I think this is very current with this well, style. It matches the Meowie Hour logo perfectly. Oh my yes, gosh, you're does. right, it does. <laughs> <laughs> all art critics now, wow. But please guys, uh, check it out. It's called Sophistic Cats. It's gonna be a term you're gonna hear a lot more. And it's amazing, it is a small world. Josh Agel, Shag, our special guest, Dr. Marcy Koski, actually met him. So there you go. And I'm shout out again to Karen Lawrence. That lady knows the history of cats down pat. So, and she lives kind of near you because she's in Canada. No, she's on the other, oh, she's, she's on, on the, the other coast. coast. All right. Yeah. Sorry. A little different. Yeah. But our special guest, Dr. Marcy is in Vancouver, Washington. Mm -hmm. So we, you have an early show. You're, you're going to be kitty cocktail and early today right? <laughs> I can't I can't really kitty cocktail too hard though because I have a <laughs> meeting with a client after this so probably she needs be. to keep her wits about her all right well uh, moving on uh, I want to make sure that uh, uh, everybody knows that we did pick winners from last week's trivia contest and we have thanking our sponsor in Clover they make the um, cat and dog supplements, you're going to win a four pack of Spry, Flow, Smile, and Sleek. And in upcoming uh, episodes of Meowie Hour, great news. See that thing that says digestive aid and hip and joint and dental health? We're going to start be giving away some of those supplements too from our sponsor. But in the meantime, why don't you save a little ka-ching? Just go to inclover.com. At checkout, type in Meowie in Clover 21, and you're going to save yourself 10%. That's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. And they've been around for over a quarter century, and they're founded by Rebecca Rose, who is a biochemist. So pause up to our sponsor, in Clover. So the question last week we t tested your knowledge on, and she was on my radio show, the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio, Rita Mae Brown. She just published her 30th book in the mystery of Mrs. Murphy mystery series. And I asked you, what was the, what's the name of the newest book that just came out? And the answer, I love her word at play. You ready? Claws for alarm. So Kathy, we've got two different winners, don't we? Three. Oh, three, three. Okay. 
Yeah, so the I love winners. <laughs> yeah. The in clover winner was Susan Wittich. And then Dr. Marty also Susan. gave us a couple of his books. So your cat, the owner's manual, the winner was Cheryl Boyer. And for Good Dr. Time, Marty's book, Why Do Cats Always Land on Their Feet? That winner was Denise Mango. So we have all Denise right. Mango, Cheryl Boyer, and Susan Wittich. All three winners. I've already had conversations with all three of them, and they're very excited. All right. I want you again to pay attention, folks, because today the trivia question is going to be celebrating Global Cat Day. Global Cat Day is just a few days away. It is October 16th, and it has been celebrated since 2001. So here comes your question. And the winners, did you hear me say winners, are one's going to win the four-pack of the In Clover, Another one's going to get some of these cool things just in time for Halloween. These beautiful crocheted um, kitty and doggy hats, compliments of Jill Thompson of the Onyx Cats. And let's see again, Destiny. <laughs> bring, bring Destiny up. Destiny, you wear it well, baby. You wear she it actually well. puts up with it quite well. Yes, she does. <laughs> no, she, I, think, I think Destiny's digging in. So here comes the question. And our guests, please don't say the answer. Who founded, what organization actually founded Global Cat Day? I'll give you four choices. Type in your answers. Kathy's going to pick a winner for the four pack of ink clover and the wonderful items knitted by uh, Jill Thompson. Is the, is the organization A, the Catalyst Council, B, Alley Cat Allies, C, Community Cat Coalition, or D, feral cat coalition so again your choices the catalyst council alley cat allies alley cat allies sorry community cat coalition or feral cat coalition <coughs> type in your answers now tell your friends if they can't make the show tonight go on facebook grab it because kathy doesn't pick the winner until like sunday or monday so you've got a chance so Sat you like saturday, you know, or, saturday or sunday Saturday I did, or Sunday? I did Saturday this last weekend because Sunday was crazy. But yeah, I usually <laughs> do it on Sunday. So. All right. So um, did you know the answer, Dr. Marcy? Um, no, I'm going to, okay. I mean. <laughs> I have no clue. I know um, the organizations, the but I don't know who actually. Okay. Well, see. All right. Let's get going. Um, I am very happy. We have never met. But I have admired her from afar. And we're talking about our very special guest today, Dr. Marcy Koski. She is a certified feline behavior and training consultant. She is the founder of Feline Behavior Solutions. It's based in the Pacific Northwest, but she helps people and their fine felines all over the place. We are posting a lot of her website and Facebook and social media links on this right now. Um, I mean, you go to her Facebook page, and we're talking 6.4 thousand members of her private Facebook group. So I guess that begs the question, Dr. Marcy, we sure have a lot to learn about how to get the best relationship with our cats, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Oh my. I think it, it's really, um, it astounds me how um, most people don't, understand cats very well right um and i think a lot of people assume that cats really are small dogs and then they're surprised when they <laughs> look at destiny's like, no. like small dogs <laughs> yeah and their behavior baffles people and i think it just goes to it speaks to you know, this really long relationship that cats have had or dogs have had with people right. over the last tens of thousands of years. And it's a very close working relationship. And there's just been this really close relationship between dogs and humans. And so we understand each other very well. 
And we do not have that history with Kat. No, it's we more about history sometimes, yeah, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> the cat yeah. is just there to take care of the, the rats and the mice, that's all. Yeah, so but there's yeah. so much more. I mean, there's so um, much. They yeah. are so much more. Share a little a bit about the your kitties, your personal cats, because if you don't mind, Kathy, can we show a few of the pictures she sent us? Because um, one of them's doing a fist bump, one of them's giving her a kiss on the face. These are adorable felines. Do you have those pictures? Okay. <laughs> um, I can send them to you maybe? I can probably find them. Um, They're in the folder, but that's yeah. okay. But let's talk about Abby, Samantha, and okay. Oliver, and then Momo. Momo. So I have, okay. I have four cats, and um, Samantha's the oldest. She's 13, and mm -hmm. she actually had a litter of kittens when she was about one and Oliver and Momo were a part of that litter. This is Samantha right here. Aww. Um, and I love she, that picture. she is so sweet. She's one of the sweetest cats I've ever known. Um, and just so, so, so sweet. She has these gorgeous blue eyes and she's the one cat that we have that will snuggle up on our laps, like <laughs> okay. watching TV. Uh -huh. um, and then Oliver and Momo, like I said, brother and sister, and they're 12 years old. They're the brown um, tabbies. The, Oliver's them. a brown tabby. Oh, okay. And then Momo is this gorgeous, I mean, they're both gorgeous. Uh -huh. Oliver has his mom's striking blue eyes. And um, Momo is a gray cat with a white collar okay. um, and white paws and a little gray nose. And she's adorable. Um, and then unrelated to those three cats is Abby, okay. who was my cat before I met my husband. You mean Samantha we... or Abby? Abby. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So Samantha is Oliver and Momo's mom. mom. And um, this is Abby. I love this and... fist bump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I trained her to do fist bumps and um, she can sit and spin, jump up, get down. We were working working on um, jumping through my arms and she didn't really want to do that so much. So <laughs> we stick with the classics. You have, you have beautiful cats. People are wondering how you got into the world of helping people understand cat behavior and you're saving lives. That's without a doubt, but let's wheel back the video. Um, oh, oh, you, oh, wait, wait, oh here wait, we, we got some wait. breaking news guys on Meowie Hour. There's Abby. Oh, hi, Abby. Nice entrance, perfect timing. <laughs> I told I you, I told you, as soon as, I, as soon as we go live, <laughs> she's, you know, going to come in and start pouncing in that paper. That's fine. We, that's what Meowie Hour is all about. <laughs> but uh, were you born and raised in the Pacific Northwest? No, um, I was born in San Francisco. Okay. And um, my dad was in the Coast Guard and we actually moved all over the country. Um, wow. So I've lived in a lot of different places and then... Uh, most recently, I moved up here from the San Diego area. Um, oh, I was in Oceanside for many years. Oh, that's that was I was um, working with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service down there, and oh, wow. my territory was um, Carlsbad, Oceanside, Solana Beach. Wow, um, that's and, a beautiful, that's a beautiful part of the county. Yeah, yeah, that that was those were that was my area, um, and so I was working with endangered species down there. Um, and then I moved up here, um, also with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and um, worked for um, an office on um, endangered, threatened and endangered fish species. So wow, that's wow. What I was well, doing. and folks, she has a doctoral degree, and the doctoral degree is in fishery and wildlife biology. Yeah. So move over, Mayim Bialy. Uh, we we got a better <laughs> one right here, right here. So. Um, how did you make the transition from fish and wildlife to, to feline behavior? Um, it was hard, um, but I, I think really well worth it. Um, first of all, I've always loved cats. I've always had cats in my life. Always Remember loved your, cats. what your first cat's name was? Um, no, that first cat um, apparently was a biter when oh. I was too little and went to go live on a farm somewhere. Okay. Okay. Um, that's a story. But the cat, <laughs> the next, the next cat we had, his name was Brown Noser. Brown and, Noser? Um, 
<laughs> yes, his name was Brown Noser. And I actually wrote a book about Brown Noser when I was in the second grade. Um, it was called Baby Brown Noser. And he got into a lot of shenanigans. Nice. Um, That's a great name. name. Brown yeah, I, I mean, my dad named Brown Noser because he was, I don't know. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't quite understand when I was such a little kid. But <laughs> anyway, um, Brown Noser was a great cat. And then it was just all downhill from there in terms of my obsession with cats. So, well, um, I think it's good. And, and yeah. folks, she does behavior consults and she is going to give away a, a, an hour consult that's worth $110. So pay attention. We're having a great time talking to her. But at the end of this, I'm going to ask you a question to make sure you heard what the, what the question and answer was. Don't, don't let them know if that was the right answer, um, Dr. Marcy. And, at, and next week, we're going to announce the winner. So I do appreciate that's a very generous gift. And now everybody's like this, listening to you. <laughs> and that, that consultation is going to be transferable. So Good. even if you yourself don't have a cat behavior issue, if you have a friend or a family member and you win this, you can give yeah. that consultation to them because it really, for me, is all about helping cats and their people. My goal is to really keep cats in their homes Good. and out of shelters, not get euthanized. So that's what the goal is. Well, it says you you serve on a lot of uh, boards. You give up a, a lot of your time. You're a great uh, volunteer. You're on the board of directors for Furry Friends. It's a cat only rescue. Yeah. And um, you also work with some of the uh, local shelters, the Humane Society of uh, the Southwest Washington. Yeah. So uh, you're you're all cats, all things cats, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that, I mean, fish don't really show gratitude as much, but I know you've done a lot to help fish and wildlife. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> the cats are all excited. Woo! A doctor and fish. Woo! Does that mean I'm going to get some fish from Dr. Marcy? Well, I think that the the thing that was really hard um, about what I used to do was that working with government agencies, sometimes you get wrapped up in bureaucracy and politics. Yeah. And it was the politics that I didn't enjoy um, because a lot of times the science was just kind of squashed from the politics. Right. Yeah. And that was extremely frustrating. And um, a lot of times we didn't get to see the results of our work. Oh. I mean, sometimes conservation product project products or projects were took years in the making it could be decades right. yeah, exactly exactly yeah. so well that's a good point I mean years ago when I was a newspaper reporter I always knew to look for the white paper not the polished paper the study mm -hmm. because the white paper usually had the real information from the scientists that hadn't yeah. been sanitized by politicians <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so there you go all yeah. right well let's move forward on to that because there's several questions, and I want people to go to your Facebook page. We have it posted, but you can also uh, join her private Facebook group for cat fans. Mm -hmm. And she does, I've seen your video, short videos, your questions. But this one, I think, is a popular question that needs to be addressed. And that is, your kitty's being a butthead. Why are you not reaching for a squirt gun with water? What is the... What's the um, what's going to happen to that relationship with you and that cat? Oh man, this is just such a controversial topic. Thanks for bringing yeah. up the controversy. No. Hey, meow hour, it's, you it's know. It's good though. It's it's good. <laughs> this is one of my key things. I will I will fall on this sword okay. or this squirt gun. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, I do not advocate for the use of the squirt gun or the squirt bottle or whatever you want to call it. And and this goes for other things too. Um, similar things um, that cause fear, anxiety, and stress. Um, you because know. she is also a fear-free pet certified professional, everyone. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So what we want to do is decrease that level of fear, anxiety, and stress for cats in their environment good. so that cats can be confident and have a good relationship with their humans. And give um, them a fist, a paw bump, or a kiss on the face. Yeah, exactly. Um, one thing that I've that I'm I'm very firm about is that if you're using the spray bottle with your cat, 
Um, well, first of all, it doesn't always work because some cats just think it's a game. <laughs> <laughs> my, my cat, cat Rusty, is... yeah, my cat Rusty loves the shower, walks in on the yeah. shower all the time. Kathy, you know that there are certain breeds that are like, we love water, bring it on. Yeah. Um, right. So first of all, it doesn't work for those cats. Second of all, it can really erode the relationship that you have with your cat. And instead of doing something just naughty and maybe mildly annoying, like getting up on the counters or, you know, exhibiting some play aggression where they want to play with you, then they start to fear you or become aggressive and or or angry and that can cause aggression issues that are a lot harder to fix because the fundamental yeah. relationship that you have with your cat has changed yeah i never i never want to divorce from my cat yeah yeah i don't want to ever hear my cat come up to me and say um sorry things aren't working right right I, and i know my cats they can't really pay me alimony or anything so <laughs> that would be a not a good deal on my end so instead of reaching for the squirt bottle or the yeah. squirt gun what what do you do if you think the cat is doing something in our human way hey we don't want you to do that but what can you do okay so think of it this way your cat is trying to meet a need okay cats are instinctual animals they are not removed from their instinct instinctual behaviors. I mean, they are so close to their ancestors and the evolutionary lines that they evolved from in terms of their instincts. So they are trying to express a behavioral need. So that's why they claw on things. That's why they get up high. It's why they hunt. And when you uh, are- I'm laughing because both of my cats are on my hutch yeah, right exactly. above me looking down at me. Exactly. Well, they're <laughs> judging you. That's that's their their deal. They they're probably they, laughing. They like to judge. Yes, yeah. they like to judge. Um, so if you tell them no, you can't do that. There has to be a yes. What okay. can they do instead? Good. What can they Good. do instead? So for every no, there has to be a yes because if you don't give them a way to express that instinctual behavior. They're going to keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And you're just going to be telling them, no, 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 no. And then the frustration is going to go high for everybody and it's going to devolve from there. So you give them a way to express that behavior in an appropriate way that you guys can both agree on. Okay. And then you reward them for using that alternative mode. So it's all about positive reinforcement and not punishment. I like that. So let's say <clears throat> Rusty. Uh, Rusty is um, trying to scratch the couch, which, you know, I'm not going to reach for the squirt gun. I know what to do, but I know you probably have a brilliant answer. He is like going up and down. He needs this kind of scratch at that moment. What can we do? to redirect him so that I'm not tarnishing my connection with him because I love him. So you're going to try to head that off at the pass, first of all. Um, and so what I generally recommend for scratching is you're going to make, I mean, first of all, he's telling you where he likes to scratch. He's liking, he, he tells you what he likes to scratch. So you want to try to give him something that's going to match that. A lot okay. of cats like to scratch along commonly traveled pathways in the home. So don't put a scratcher in the corner. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to use it. Right. Um, don't give him a little tiny baby scratcher because <laughs> it's going to move. It's going to tip over. You, I mean, cats like couches because they're in the middle of traveled pathways. They smell like they're people. They're big. They don't move when you, when you scratch them. So first of all, you can put something on your couch so that he, the scratching isn't so satisfying. So double-sided sticky tape or- like, I, I have that on you know, the corners now, yeah. Yeah, that works great. It doesn't have to stay there either. You can remove it off after a couple of weeks. Um, but then get an appropriate scratcher. Again, what is he telling you he likes to scratch? So you're gonna want a tall vertical scratcher, one that's not gonna move or wobble, one that's tall enough that he can scratch all the way up. And then when he comes over to the cat, the couch, and don't let him actually scratch the couch, what you're going to do is you're going to direct him over to the scratching post that's right next to the couch. <laughs> so he has a great option right there. And what you can do is you can dangle a toy over it. You can mm -hmm. hold a treat over it. 
something that he's going to reach up and scratch. Um, a lot of cats, once they do reach up and get their paws on that scratching post, even though they're going for a treat or a toy, they go, oh, this is kind of nice. I kind of like this. And then you can use that treat or the toy to reward the cat for scratching or right. even just exploring um, and well, touching and checking it I, out. I think that you make a point that, you know, cat furniture needs to be in the rooms that are most trafficked by cats and people. And... You know, we've had people on like Kate Benjamin, who has House Panther and others. Mm -hmm. Houses can be beautiful, but they also can be functional for both the feline and for um, the human. Um, what is that? Um, what is that? Oh, pet safety cat, Casey. Uh, um, I have a question, Dr. Marcy. Are you ready? What is, what is it, Casey? Speak up. Okay. Um, I'm pretty outgoing, but I know some cats have some hiding behaviors and mm -hmm. What can we do to help those kind of shy cats living in their own home to feel like they can be in any room and feel safe? That's my wish. That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Um, so if you have a shyer cat, it's really good to be able to give cats hiding spaces in every single room where you want them to hang out. Good. Um, okay. And, and this is this is really helpful because cats are usually, if, if a cat is scared and doesn't have a hiding space right there, they're gonna find something to hide in. And that could be under a bed or behind a couch, someplace where you can't really get to them. Okay. And I prefer to not have cats hide in inaccessible places just for safety purposes. And also it's harder for them to kind of get used to, like if it's a new cat, it's hard, harder for them to get used to to the environment just mm -hmm. because they're so far removed. So put hiding spaces around your living areas. And this doesn't- Can you give me some examples? How, what kind of okay. hiding space? Okay, boxes are great. Okay, um, we've had enough of them with this COVID with Amazon and Chewy.com. <laughs> Another one that I really like is the hide and sneak. Okay, show us. Um, oh. Yeah, so okay. it's just like a paper bag tunnel. It's the Hide and Sneak by Jessie like and Rue. It's okay. a great toy. Um, another thing that you can do is if you have a chair with four legs, just drape a blanket over it and make a little, little Easy. cat hut. It's yeah. free. You see the little paws <laughs> come out? Yeah. <laughs> you can use bags. Just make sure you clip off the handles first. Okay. Um, and I mean, there's all sorts of things you can use. And that gives your cats options. Another thing I like, and this is especially, this especially goes for um, families with young kids, designate one or two places in each room where if your cat is in that area, it's a looky no touchy zone. And that nice. means that nice. you're not going to put your hands inside that area. That is just for your cat. That is just for your Well, cat. and you're teaching the next generation of pet advocates yeah. some good, good uh, manners, right? Yeah, we have to respect cats and their choices. Um, yeah. It really is about giving cats choices because then they feel like they have some amount of control over their environment. Yeah. And that helps to build confidence and trust in their people. And I know growing up, uh, my cat was Corky and he swam in our backyard lake. And <laughs> I, I felt like I had such a connection to him. And Casey and I and Rusty, we're very, very bonded. And I feel blessed. I feel like I must be doing something right. But teaching kids, what did you say? It looky, no touchy, would you say? Looky, no touchy. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, and kids will make that a game because their buddies will come over and they'll, no, 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 no. Felix is over here. That's a looky, no touchy. And they'll be like, what? So yeah. I like that you're making it a game, but you're also developing respect for cats and kids that's very yeah. critical yeah. can i ask a question yeah so so back to the squirt gun most okay. people that i know that use the squirt gun is trying to prevent the cat from running outside the door so they think okay or running you know, open the door and the cat's going to dash out so they keep a squirt gun outside the door to try to keep the cat from running out what's oh. the solution for that to have that a cat that likes to dash out far oh, a door yeah, darter. Door, yeah. door darters, door dashers. I mean, not the food kind. <laughs> they don't hire cats. Um, <laughs> so 
There's a few, there's a few different ways to approach this. And um, there's the short game and then there's the long game. And to me, the long game is a little bit more rewarding. Um, the short game, it's more about keeping the cat away from the door when you leave. Um, but that can be wrapped up into the short game. So, um, I mean, the long game. So what we wanna ultimately teach the cat is, um, you never go out the door um, and you want to instill in them um, when they hear the door, like either somebody coming in or somebody going out, they go to a different place where good things happen. I like to call this the meet and greet station. Okay. So you designate well, meet, M E A T or <laughs> it depends. I mean, okay. what are you doing at the meet and greet station? <laughs> so at the meet and greet station, and I usually like this to be like a little cat tree that's you know either in another room or across the room from the door. And before you leave to go out the door, you call your you train your cat to get up on the meet and greet station. And this is pretty easy because when you call your cat to go up on the meet and greet station, good things are going to happen there. So a okay, favorite treat right. or brushing or maybe a food puzzle or, or yeah, yeah. make it a very cool place to be. Yeah. Right. And then before you leave, you're going to put something there that your cat is going to interact with that might take a little bit of time. So maybe a churu treat on a licky mat or something like that. Okay. All um, right. So Right before you leave, you call your cat over to the meet and greet station, and then you head out the door while your cat is occupied. Then the other side of that is what happens when you come home. Okay. So when you come home, it's going to be kind of the same deal. Like you, you teach your cat, okay, I'm not going to pay you any attention until you go over to the meet and greet station. Oh. And so you, you come in the door, you're not paying your cat any attention if he's trying to come at you or get out the door. And when you're first training him, you want to go right over to the meet, meet and greet station and then bust out something good, you know, just a, a treat or something, petting, whatever he likes. Um, so that he gets, he gets it down. Like, oh, first thing that happens is my person comes home and then we go to the meet and greet station and fun things happen. I like and that because, yeah, yeah, don't they, um, I, I say cats are all about predictability, right? Yes. Yep. They... They are really they good. They know our routine, so we know, yes. we know their routine. So yeah, they do very great on routines and they predict when things are happening. So pretty soon he's going to hear the garage door. He's going to hear the jingle of the keys and he's going to know to get up on that meet and greet station and not head over to the door because he's not getting anything at the door. So we also need to incorporate a little bit of patience in us yes. humans, right? Yes, yes. Um, another tip I have for the door down too, is that you can provide him with alternative ways of experiencing the outdoors. So you could train him to be on a harness and leash. You could give him um, access to a catio or a cat tent. We have um, a patio in our house because we have cats okay. and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> By perpetual. Yeah. Um, I, we, just, we just finished this catio in my office for Abby. So Oh, um, nice. Halloween decorated right now. Um, that, I think the cat in there needs to eat. <laughs> yes. But she can hop <laughs> right up on that little cat tree and then go out the cat door. Um, oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yes. So we're teaching her how to use the cat door right now. Um, and and then you can also cat strollers. I'm that crazy lady in the neighborhood. Yeah, Casey rides. And Casey yeah. and Rusty are cat strollers. And the, the key to, if you're going to be using a cat stroller or a harness or a leash or a cat tent outdoors, you never let the cat walk out the door. You always okay. pick the cat up first and then take them outside. They're never walking out that door by themselves. Good boy. That's a great tip. I love that tip. That's a really good tip. Um, what about during COVID? I got rusty because Samantha Martin of the Amazing Acro Cats, we're at a conference and she's like, you got to take him home. Yeah. He was about seven months old. She had too many ginger boys in her Amazing Acro Cats. And I had to call my wife and say, uh, I think I'm bringing home Rusty along with Pet Safety Cat Casey. And I did my best, but it wasn't an instant friendship with Casey and Rusty. Yeah. In fact, Casey stopped eating for a day or so, and they're best friends now, but I think the secret was giving enough resources and being patient, 
but I'm not Dr. Marcy Koski, so I'm going to ask you, a lot of people bring home a cat or a kitten for different circumstances, right. and they really want the resident cat and that new cat to at least be okay with each other. They don't have yeah. to be BFFs, that's best feline friends. Right. <laughs> um, and honestly, this is probably about 75% of my workload. Wow, and, really? Um, okay. Cats not getting along. Um, okay, so and, any tips? I know, Yeah. obviously it's very layered and you've got to ask a lot of questions, be a cat detective and find out right. circumstances, but right. what are a few takeaways that can help some people? Okay, so patience is absolutely key. And what you want to try to do is start slow okay. and you want to move very slowly. The first thing you're going to do is introduce via scent. Cat's sense of smell is so important to them. They must be comfortable with another cat's scent um, or the scent of a new environment if you're talking about the newcomer cat. I think there's a new movie out called The Scent of a Feline. <laughs> I had a cat that wasn't getting along with some of the others when and so I bathed them all in really smelly strawberry shampoo oh my god <laughs> and so they all smelled the same and they got along fine after that <laughs> they were probably uniting with a common yeah. enemy they're probably like this lady she's all gonna bathe us if we don't get along together <laughs> that really strong strawberry shampoo Woo! It, it did the number <laughs> So yeah, and actually I always recommend pairing um, whatever you're doing, whether it's scent um, introductions or visual introductions, start very slowly at first, you always pair everything with something positive okay. because you're, you're trying to build positive associations with the newcomer cat and, and the resident cat also. So it's very little tiny doses of exposure. So this is systematic desensitization. And then <laughs> wait, wait, um, say it, you just sl slap that one right past everybody. Say it again. Systematic desensitization. Yes. All right. So you can think of that as turning a volume knob up on the level of exposure. Good, good. So just whoop, And you want to go very <laughs> slowly. If you go to from zero to 10, like say you take your new cat and put them in the same room with your resident you throw, cat? Throw it in the middle of the floor and say, get yeah, along with everybody. Yeah. yeah. That's, well, that's... in my circumstance, I was in a little bit of a pinch because I had to fly home with two cats. Yeah. And fortunately, Dusty Rainbow was on the same flight with me so she could take Rusty in his carrier. But they had to spend the night in the hotel room together with me. Oh and I God. knew that was like a recipe for disaster. Because yeah. Casey, I came in and he's all that, meow, meow, how you doing? What the hell did you bring into this <laughs> hotel room? So I yeah. knew I was already in uh, negative yardage. Right, right, right. So there's sensitive des des or systematic desensitization, right? And then when you're pairing something good with, with <laughs> something that is either bad or scary, to make the bad or scary thing less bad and scary and more good, that's called counter conditioning. Mm -hmm. So you try to change this, the association. So you pair counter conditioning and systematic desensitization together. And that's when you have the best opportunity for introducing cats successfully. Um, and you just want to go step by step, break it down, you know, scent swapping. You're going to put each other's bedding in their spaces and put little treats in with them. So they go, oh, whenever I smell this other cat, I get treats. This is interesting. Hmm. It smells a little like strawberries, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we had one of our viewers ask, what about cats that attack your ankles? Just out of the blue, don't, don't expect it. In fact, my hairdresser today told me that her cat, it just attacked her arm. It was, Perfectly fine sitting on her lap. Next thing she knew, it was attacking her arm. And I'm like, you know, so I gave her some advice, but I'd like to hear your advice. Yeah. So, okay. Oh, you know, definitely would need more information about what's going on to make a diagnosis. There's a lot of different types of aggression. And one thing that's very common when a cat just kind of zooms out of nowhere and attacks ankles Oftentimes that's play or predatory aggression. Okay. Um, especially if it's silent, you know, the cat is just like waiting around the corner. 
yeah. doing their predatory beastie yeah, thing and then attack out of nowhere. So um, again, you have your short game and your long game. The short game is, okay, what do I do knowing that my cat is around the corner? How do I walk down the hallway without getting pounced? Well, take a toy, toss it down the, the hallway, and hopefully your cat will go after that instead of you. But you can't do that forever, and that's totally understandable. So you want to give your cat every day that opportunity to express those predatory instincts. So a long wand toy, change those lures out every couple of days, get your cat running around, acting like a predator, so that the cat understands, okay, I get to hunt, and I don't have to go after my people's legs anymore. Yeah. Well, that was my advice to her. She needs to play with the cat more. Cause yeah, it, keep some little paper wads or something sweet, in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, you know. And plus her husband has a bad habit of roughhousing with the hands. Oh, and I always bad. say hands are not toys. Hands are hands. No, no, and no. you need to make sure your cat never thinks your hand is a toy. That's Absolutely. just a bad, bad thing Absolutely. to do. Yeah. Hey, we were, we're going to, um, uh, is there any other quick question? Because we've got about 15 minutes left and I want to make see, sure. I didn't see any others. Let me look okay. real quick. Um, because we're, we'll, we'll add a question at the end, but I wanted to oh, see. What about a cat? I do have, what about a cat that has P-I-C-A? Oh, oh Pika. 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 Yeah. Pika. You say yeah. Pika, I say Pika. Is that food? At, what is that exactly? That's, um, when you're, when, anything is eating and consuming a non-food item. Something it's not item. supposed to, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's, not, it's a non-food item, right? Non-food item, and they're actually ingesting it. And obviously that can be very dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, I've dealt with several of cats with this issue. The first thing you want to do is make sure you're feeding your cat enough food. Um, in about 50% of the clients that I've worked with with this problem, I took a look at what the cats were eating and they were being underfed. So a lot of times they're eating because they're hungry. Mm. Um, so you wanna make sure they're getting enough to eat. Um, and, and you absolutely wanna take your cat in to see the vet. That's kind of a, yeah. a no brainer. Make sure your cat is healthy because this can be a symptom of some other issues that are happening. Um, they could have an obstruction too. I'm talking as a Absolutely. pet first aid instructor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you definitely want to make sure nothing internally is happening. Um, a lot of times, pika or pika um, can be caused by anxiety or boredom. That's what um, I was thinking. Yeah. 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 So, Good definitely, point. you want to make sure that you have a schedule that is very predictable. Um, and you want to have plenty of enrichment items. You want to be able to redirect if you think your cat is going to start chewing something. Um, and you want to manage your environment so that the, the dangers associated with actually consuming non-food items are minimized. Um, but your cat may need to be treated with medication as well, um, which can help reduce anxiety. Um, which is often yeah, and, and what I like is that you just don't have one answer for everything and <laughs> you really are fact gathering right that's what you have to yeah. do you're gathering yeah. facts before you make any suggestions which to me makes you why you're as good as you are we we're talking to Dr. Marcy Koski she is the founder of the feline behavior solutions and she helps people all over the place and she's given away a, a one-hour consult that's valued at $110. That's either you can have or you could pass on to one of your friends. And I wanna see if you guys were paying attention. So we're not gonna answer it right now, but we all know the answer. The, Kathy will pick the winner who knew the name of Dr. Marcy's cat from childhood that she wrote a book about in second grade. So that's the question, everybody. Let's see how good you were. Um, and also, um, at this time, I want to, uh, uh, Kathy's going to step in and talk about the American short hair. I'm going to go off screen a bit to get ready for our Devon Rex Daiquiri. But I want to ask you, uh, Marcy, what do you think? You having a good time? Oh, yeah, this is super fun. I love it. All right. So you two mingle and I'll get ready for the cocktail. Okay, so let's talk about the American short hair. The American short hair is our North American domestic short hair breed. 
So when 99% of the cats running around outside are domestic short hairs. We call this breed our American short hair because we know their parentage and we know their heritage. We know their lineage all the way back. So this is our American short hair breed, our domestic short hair breed of cat. So it was um, the working cats. We were talking about the, the behavior and the relationship that we had with cats. We, these are the working breed of cats. These cats were originally registered uh, one of the first five breeds registered in 1906 as a domestic short hair, and in 1966 that was changed to the American short hair name. It's a strongly built, well balanced, symmetrical cat. It has power, endurance, and agility. The coat is very thick, it's, but it's what we call a short and hard coat. And by hard, what I mean is that it lays flat and it's not going to be fluffy or cottony, so it's not going to get stuck on briars and not going to get, you know, hung up on things. So the cat's able to zip in and out of brush and not have its coat hold it back. So it's a short, even, thick coat. They have a broad head. Um, their head is kind of oval in shape, and their eyes are like you took an almond and you cut it in half. So it's straighter across the top, round on the bottom. And they come in all colors and patterns except the Siamese pattern. So let's look at some cats here. Uh, these cats will almost always have green eyes. Um, they, I mean, especially with the silver tabby pattern, they're going to have the green eyes. Um, they come in the classic tabby pattern, like what we're seeing here. They also come, these are also classics. They come in the bicolor pattern, which has the white. Um, I don't know if I have any mackerels in here or not. Most of these are all classics. Here's a brown tabby. So uh, lots of different colors and patterns. Very distinctive look to the head. This breed has been used in a lot of development of our other breeds, um, such as with the Aussie cat and the American wire hair and the Bombay was made with a black American short hair across with the Burmese. So uh, these breeds have been, this breed has been used as a lot of the foundation of some newer breeds, but it is our domestic short hair breed that's naturally occurring in North America, and it's the one we claim as our cat. Did you have any questions, Marty? I mean, Marcy? No, I, those cats are beautiful. I love, I love them. It's standard, I think, is very specific. Um, a lot of our standards don't get that specific when they're describing things, but it actually says on the head, there should be as much head above the middle of the eye as there is below the middle of the eye, which is very specific when you talk about something like that. You can divide the body into three equal portions between the front torso, the middle torso, and then the back. Um, the eye shape was very distinctive with the half almond, the muzzles broad enough and long enough to grasp prey. Uh, the standard is very specific on this breed. And, and, and when you see them and, they're, and it's all perfectly put together, it's just such a beautiful cat. Kathy is, so to me, I mean, like those, the nose and the muzzle seem really kind of short. Yeah. Um, compared to like a typical domestic cat, like I recognize right. is that standard for the breed it's kind of it a just bit. it can't be too short they want enough there to grasp their prey but they yeah they, the breeders have gotten the muzzles a little shorter than what you would see on just a regular cat roaming around because yeah. they like they like the roundness that it gives the head yeah yeah thanks kathy that was a good one i like i love that cat i think that's one of the coolest breeds it's one of my favorites for sure yeah. Um, all right. Um, we're going to move on to uh, how we can help all cats. Remember, three days from now, it's Global Cat Day. So Kathy is going to talk about how we can get our cat a membership into the community cat world. Not community, companion. Oh, companion, Art. How long have you been doing this show, Arden? <laughs> <laughs> so our program yeah. called CCW stands for Companion Cat World. It's a way to register your cat with the Cat Fantasy Association. You get a unique registration number. When you upload a picture, your cat's picture goes on our gallery of cats. You can see all of them at cfa.org slash 
CCW. It's a one-time fee of $13. You get this beautiful hard plastic card. You can get luggage tags, which are great to put on your cat crate when it goes to the vet, so you know who's is who's. Also key rings. And it, part of your registration fee of $13 goes to support a local shelter in your area. That's what so I check like. it all out at cfa.org slash CCW. All right. Hey, um, we're going to shift gears. Uh, Dr. Marcy, I don't know if you know, I, I'm a master instructor in pet first aid and CPR. And one of my most popular classes is cat first aid and CPR. I just taught a class last night. And one of our Meowie Hour guests, Ramona Merrick, was one of my students. And I heard this one lady say who runs a cat first aid, a cat sitting business said, I took a first aid class before and I think they did two seconds on cats. So I'm really looking for something that helps me learn about cats. So pet first aid for you. If you all are interested in having me teach a class, um, we don't have one scheduled for the rest of the year, but contact me, pet first aid for you, because if you can get at least four people together, have Zoom, we'll teach. And I also wanted to bring out, uh, I just got this in the mail today, Cat Talk, which our editor, Teresa Kiger, is the editor and the all breed cat. And I forgot, I actually wrote a whole article <laughs> <laughs> about uh, cat first aid and uh, Check this picture out, folks. Yes, that is Casey in class pretending to have a bleeding leg that we are helping. And uh, there he is again, posing, talking about bleeding. But I wanted to thank uh, Teresa and uh, the Cat Talk. It's a publication of the Cat Fancy Association for giving me the opportunity to give some safety tips to everybody in, in that. Um, so contact me if you have cats and dogs. Um, I, I teach basic class, I teach classes for two-year certificates, and I teach classes that last two days so you become an instructor in pet first aid. So we teach different levels. So drum roll. Um, I know we were doing the American short hair, but we're out of sync with my kitty cocktails because I did the Dandy Devon Rex daiquiri today because I want you to sip and savor this perfect twist to the classic daiquiri. And you'll need a clear rum, two tables, you'll need lime juice, maple syrup, strawberries, frozen or fresh, and lime slices. Again, speak of the devil, Teresa Kiger, she creates each and every beautiful graphic for my kitty cocktails. So uh, close your ears, everybody. I got the blender with ice, 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 baby. Here we go. Ice, ice, baby. Okay, here we go. Stephanie's ready. She's like, crank it up. <laughs> How much ice is going in there? I don't know. We can't see. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done crushing ice. We can't hear right. while the blender's going either. Okay. <laughs> then you want to add four ounces of clear rum. I've got some party here. So um, I'm not going to count because uh, 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 one ounce is a four count. I'm going to cheat and just do a little shot glass. I'm going to put four of those in there. One, two, three, four. Then it sounds weird, but I'm going to add two ounces of maple syrup. What? what? I, love mix I love mixology. All right. It's going to make, give it a nice little taste. Then you're going to add uh, two ounces or two tablespoons of lime juice. So here we go. Squirt. That's one tablespoon. Squirt. That's another tablespoon. And so. last but not least, you need to add some either fresh or frozen strawberries. You know we're going to rattle it again. So everybody, hold your ears. Let me okay. make sure I still have the lid. Okay, here we go. All right, here we go. Oh, that sounded good, didn't it? So it you got a nice it little... totally blanked out the sound. So <laughs> we didn't hear it at all. And I take a nice slime and I rim my glass. So every sip is a good one. And here we go. That, that looks, looks pretty. Good. Mm -hmm. And I just give it a nice little pour. And I want to make it look pretty. 
So I am going to, well, here it is. I'm going to add a nice little top of a, line, a little strawberry. So at this time, I ask you all to please raise a glass. It can be this beautiful uh, Devon Rex daiquiri. It could be soda. It could be soda. It could be water. It doesn't matter. But it is time for all of us humans to raise a glass and toast to all cats, all cats, for making us better people. We love you, kitties. Yes. Cheers. Mm. Cheers. I'm raising some the... cat treats, too. Oh, oh the there cat. you go. Cheers. You're not drinking those, are you? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, um, I'm getting my fruit in for today, right? Um, yeah. Hey, we've had a great time with all of you and everybody out there. I really appreciate you tuning in. You've been wonderful. I try to answer some of your questions that you have. We really want to thank Dr. Marcy Koski for being our very special guest. You've taught us a lot, Dr. Marcy. We hope sometime you'll come back because you have a lot more to say. So I'd love to. Yeah, you survived Meowie Hour. <laughs> Thank you we so wanna... much for having me. All right. All right. And we appreciate the Cat Fancier Association for bringing us uh, Meowie Hour every week and our sponsor, Inclover, the maker of cat and dog supplements. I love hanging out with Kathy Black, my uh, co-host with Destiny, our doggy. Um, our doggy designee and thank you uh, Jill Thompson for your creative uh, hats for the kitties and the doggies she's with Onyx Cats um, next week we got a mystery writer in the house yep Molly Hunt oh I love she Molly is, she's going to be our guest because I think it's kind of cool to talk to somebody who writes uh, fiction and cats are central characters so uh, she, like you, like myself, are members of the Cat Writers Association. So we look forward to having uh, Molly Hunt next week. So guys, you know the deal. Until next time, same cat channel, same cat time. We'll see you on Meowie Hour. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>